to this short episode on management of rabies. Today we are going to discuss about the post-exposure prophylaxis which is very important for rabies, the pre-exposure as well as the re-exposure prophylaxis for rabies. Any of this question can come in your entrance examinations. Before that, just a little heads up, you can avail iconic subscription on an academy which is an academy and prep ladder both. If you take the plus subscription, you're going to choose the best from the best. You're going to guess and get an access to both live and recorded classes. You're going to compete in live tests and quizzes. You can study on device of your choice. You can also get an access to a question bank with 25,000 more questions. And very soon, we are also coming out with printed notes, which will be offered to the plus subscribers. Also, there is a neat PG one month package to ace your preparation, which has just started on an academy. You can avail this by using PSM 10 or PSM Live and get a 10% off. So we are going to cover fast track revision batch here, where all important things for the NEET PG will be covered. We also have an updated and highly effective Q bank with more than 25,000 questions. Also, if you can see, there are these are the schedules for grand test, which are absolutely free. So next grand test is going to happen on 21st of August. Now, guys, let us talk about rabies. Rabies may a question out there on pro, pro, uh, post exposure, pre exposure, and re exposure prophylaxis. Most important over here is post exposure, from which a lot of questions come. In India, which type of rabies is very common? It is the urban rabies. AB, urban rabies means the person has been bit by a dog, say. And the National Rabies Control Program tells us that if anybody has been bit by a dog, or by any other animal, we immediately have to provide prophylaxis, which is known as a post-exposure prophylaxis. But to scale here, we have to see the category of the wound. So for that category, one wound is touching of feeding animals or licks on intact skin. The skin is intact. Category two, you will see there is nibbling on uncovered skin. All right, the skin is not covered. It's now uncovered. There's some nibbling. There is minor scratches or aberrations, but without bleeding. No bleeding in category two. Category three wound mein kya hota hai? single bite or multiple transdermal bites or scratches. There is blood oozing out. Okay, category three also involves blood oozing out. That is very, very important. If it's a lick on a broken skin, broken skin mein lick hai, to it is category 3. Intact skin mein lick hai, it is category 1. Contamination of mucous membrane with saliva from the licks is very, very important. It is <clears throat> category 3. If somebody has been bit by a bat, okay, that is also category 3. Please remember, India mein there is no bat rabies. It's only seen in America. So based on this category, we have for post-exposure prophylaxis, if it's category 1 bite, nothing has to be done. If it's a category 2 bite, immediate vaccination and local treatment of the wound. If it's a category 3 bite, immediate vaccination, rabies, immunoglobulin along with local treatment. Local treatment means you have to put your wound under running water at least for 10 to 15 minutes so that none of the virus can attach themselves to the nerve endings, prevent the dissemination. All right, you are not going to suture any of the wounds. If suturing is required, you will Will delay it for 24 to 48 hours, you are not going to suture the wound. So local treatment may keep it under running water for 15 to 20 minutes. Now, very, very important is this post-exposure prophylaxis, everybody. Okay, post-exposure prophylaxis. A lot of questions come from this. Now, if you look over here, all right, the first regimen which I've written, updated thigh red cross regimen. Now, thigh red cross regimen is the uh, regimen which is being followed by our national rabies control program. Theke? National rabies control program is following this updated thigh red cross regimen. So, how can you remember India may, all right, India may, we are following this thigh, I word hai, India, India may, we are following this. And by this regimen, how are we giving the vaccine, guys? We are giving the vaccine intradermally, all right? So here it has the word D also, red intradermal, ID, India and red. Okay, so uh, according to this uh, vaccination schedule, the vaccine is given on day 03728. 2, 2, 
टू एंड टू एक्चुअली यहाँ पे वी आर मिसिंग आउट ऑन विच डे द फोर्टीन डे सो इट वे यू कैन ऑल्सो सी दिस इज रिटर्न एज टू 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 जीरो एंड टू What is this two two two? Two two means uh, it means that it is being given on two sides simultaneously on both the shoulders. Okay, so two doses on two sides. Okay, both shoulders it is given intradermal regimen. Point now. We also have a very important regimen, okay, which is the SN regimen. Okay, when we talk about the SN regimen, guys. Sorry, this will become point one ml intramuscular. Yes, when we talk about the SN regimen, guys, SN regimen is a five dose schedule where it is being given on zero, three, seven, fourteen, twenty eight days. So this is one, one. One and one. All right, you are just giving one dose. And how many number of visits we require over here? Five. So intradermal me fourteen day ni dete. Intramuscular me we are also giving on the fourteenth day. For adults it's given on the deltoid, and for the children it is given on anterolateral thigh of the children. But in your programs you are following thigh Red Cross India intradermal. IPC एक स्केड्यूल होता है विच इज बींग रिकमेंडेड बाई डब्ल्यू एच ओ अकॉर्डिंग टू विच जीरो थ्री सेवन डेज में देना है हियर इट इज पॉइंट वन एम एल इंट्राडोमल ओके अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस वी आर गोइंग टू गिव जीरो थ्री सेवन डेज पॉइंट वन एम एल इंट्राडोमल बट इट्स नॉट बीन अडोप्टेड बाई नेशनल रेबीज कंट्रोल प्रोग्राम नाउ गाइज वाई आर वी ऑप्टिंग फॉर इंट्राडोमल रेजमेन प्लीज रिमेंबर वन थिंग इंट्राडोमल रेजमेन ज्यादा कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव है विद वन वाइल्ड you can vaccinate more number of children and research has shown that the antigenicity produced by intradermal regimen okay produced by intradermal regimen is the same as intramuscular so obviously according to the program to make it cost effective we are opting for intradermal regimen yaad rakhna 03728 two doses on two sides 14 days missed by the intradermal regimen okay so i have just written it out for you for you we have read in the read this post exposure all right intramuscular sn regimen 1111 037 14 and 28 days post exposure intradermal which is being given in india preferred in india updated thigh red cross regimen 22202 037 28 we are missing on the 14 day post exposure in vaccinated children and pre exposure now let us read this this is a re exposure prophylaxis so what do you do in case of re exposure man lo somebody was bitten by a dog one month back and again gets bitten by it so what are you going to do in case of re exposure proper wound care you will not repeat an immunoglobulin All right. The first option is one side you can give intradermally on day zero and day third, or you can give intramuscular regimen on day zero and three in case of re-exposure. But suppose. Okay, this is if the bite has taken place more than three months. Okay, the re-exposure का जो duration is after three months again somebody suffers from a bite. But if the re-exposure if somebody suffers the bite less than three months or within three months again the person suffers the bite and we have proof of complete immunization by pre exposure profile access that means that person has received pre exposure profile access before or we have proof by post exposure profile access within last 3 months then you will only go for wound washing that is why if you come back here re exposure me it's written 0 to 3 days 0 and 3 days only if you've suffered the wound again more than 3 months duration if it is less than 3 months duration then nothing has to be done all right only wound washing has to be done please remember this even if we have proof that the person was vaccinated by pre exposure means then also nothing has to be done what is pre exposure guideline you can give one site one full vial as intramuscular dose on day 0721/28 days and option 2 is 0.1 ml as intradermal dose on day 0721 
as 28 days. You will check for neutralizing antibodies titer in people who are exposed to like this. You can do in vet, uh, veterinarians or you can do in forest workers. Theke? Or you can do in dog handlers pre-exposure prophylaxis. So, if you have neutralizing antibody titer is less than 0.5 international unit per ml every 6 months. Then you need to give a booster. Otherwise, rabies immunoglobulin, once given in life, you need not repeat it. This is very, very important. Deco, just uh, focus once again. For India, post-exposure, it's intradermal, 0, 3, 7, and here you can have a look again, 0, 3, 7, 28 days. Alright, intramuscular is not preferred in India because it's not that cost effective. It includes 14 days also. Re-exposure prophylaxis may if you get bitten by a dog within like more than 3 months from the last bite, then you will just give 2 doses on day 0 and 3. But if you are bitten again within 3 months, then you don't need to do anything. Pre-exposure is 0, 7, 21, 28 days. This can be given either by intramuscular or intradermal. Rabies immunoglobulin once given you don't need to repeat it see if the doses are delayed they should be restarted all right if if the doses are delayed should we restart the dose no all right you can continue from where it is in case of complete vaccination less than three months repeat vaccine is not required in case of time lapse more than three months repeat vaccine may be administered on day zero and three Rabies immunoglobulin is given usually once in lifetime in case of pre-exposure and not be repeated. No, but if neutralizing antibodies is less than 0.5 uh, international unit, then you have to repeat it. No contraindication for ID or IM vaccine with chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine. Vaccine may be given to pregnant females because it is a Killed vaccine. One more thing that I would like to tell all of you over here is rabies immunoglobulin all category 3 bite pe dete. All bite from wild animal is taken as category 3. But for category 2 patients may in case of immunocompromised individuals you will give a rabies immunoglobulin. Agar koi HIV AIDS ka positive patient hai gets a bite category 2 bite then only also you will give a uh, immunoglobulin in category 2 bite. I hope you understood now everybody management of rabies. Thank you so much for watching. It's must know for all the entrants. Thank you.